Hi, I'm Deborah, and this is Kids to Cuisine, where there are recipes, reviews, tips, tricks, hints, and hacks to help people of all ages learn their way around the kitchen. Today I'm making a pantry chili that is a riff on a North American style chili. It's chili in the sense that it's a stew with spices, herbs, vegetables, and protein. When it comes to chili, there are rivalries and heated discussion regarding what constitutes a real chili. I'm focusing on the spices, herbs, and flavors that make this a wonderful, tasty, flavorful dish that hits the spot and is great for all occasions and get-togethers. Watch to the end for bonuses, tips, tricks, hints and hacks, and the recipe. Spices are the key to a tasty chili. I don't mean mouth-burning heat, but a balance of spice and flavor. The herbs and spices I use for this chili are one teaspoon or five milliliters each of smoked paprika and cayenne, one half teaspoon or 2.5 milliliters each of cumin and pepper, and two teaspoons or 10 milliliters each of Mexican oregano and salt. I usually use kosher and you can swap out regular oregano if you don't have Mexican, but the flavor is different. Once I found Mexican oregano, I never went back to using other oregano when I'm making chili. I'm also using one jalapeno pepper that's chopped but not seeded. You can remove the seeds in the ribs, which are those white membranes, if you want to remove some of the heat. If I was making this for myself and my son, I would be using a scotch bonnet pepper. They are incredibly hot, but we love 12 alarm chili. Here's a trick. When eating chili, if it becomes too spicy, drink milk, eat rice or soft bread. Don't drink water. It simply burns the spices into the soft tissues of your mouth and throat. The other ingredients in this chili are one quarter of a cup or 115 milliliters of oil, one red onion, two stalks of celery, three carrots, two green peppers, one red pepper, all chopped, and three cloves of garlic, smashed and then minced, and two 28 ounce or 967 milliliter cans of diced tomatoes in juice. I often use one can of diced tomatoes and one can of crushed tomatoes for a deeper color and richer flavor. However, it's diced tomatoes that are in my pantry right now. The proteins are two pounds or one kilogram of lean ground beef and four cups or 900 milliliters of pinto beans that I had in my freezer. Watch for the hack to extend the ground beef. Intrigued? Ring the bell to receive notification of the videos that we upload every Monday and Thursday. I heated a six quart or six liter Dutch oven to medium. Then I added the oil and spices. Heating the spices allow the flavors to develop. You can get a richer, deeper flavor. I add the rest of the vegetables and saute until they start to caramelize. I'm not too rigid in the kind of vegetables I have in my chili, other than the sweet peppers, at least one green pepper, and any other ones that I happen to have in my fridge or freezer. I also love mushrooms, squash, and corn in my chili. And here's a tip. If you have people in your life that don't like chunks of veggies in their dishes, simply grate the vegetables they don't like before you saute. By the time everything is done, they basically become invisible in the sauce. It's all the nutrition and none of the texture. Remove the vegetables and add the ground beef. Saute, breaking up the meat until it's cooked through. Return the vegetables to the Dutch oven and stir everything together. Here's the bonus. You can extend meat in any recipe by adding lentils. I'm using two cups or 300 grams of red lentils. They will swell and change the color of the chili slightly. If you don't want to add the lentils, just add the remaining ingredients to the Dutch oven. Simmer it on low or pop it into a 350 degree Fahrenheit or 175 degree Celsius oven for about an hour to let the flavors fully mingle, meld and develop. As you can see, the lentils have really expanded. The chili is grown to feed a crowd. There is six quarts or six liters, approximately 22 cup or 450 milliliter servings of chili in my Dutch oven. 
If not for the lentils, there would only be approximately four quarts or four liters, which is about 15 servings at the two cup or 450 milliliter size. When the chili cools, it thickens because of the fiber from the legumes. When the chili reheats, the spiciness increases. Here's a tip. Adding tomato juice, broth or water to the chili will help tame the growing spiciness as well as loosen the chili up. I like to portion out any remainder into serving sizes from freezer to fridge to microwave or oven. This is a great potluck take along party dish. Interested in what I'm doing? You can follow me on Facebook or on Twitter. Thanks for watching and have a wondrous day.